guys welcome back to my channel in today's video we have missy kind of joining us back there in today's video we're going to talk about things from america that are actually from germany which you probably did not know and without further ado let's get right into this video So the first one is the chicken fried steak. So they never really verified where it was made from, but I think everyone knows that the Wiener Schnitzel is actually from Germany. So the theory is that the chicken fried steak actually originated from American and Australian immigrants to Texas. And from there, instead of doing the traditional German way of putting it in a frying pan, they, I guess, smothered the schnitzel out of the schnitzel, if that makes sense. So it became a very oily, thick, smothered and gravy thing. And apparently during the Second World War, America decided to call uh, the Wiener Schnitzel chicken fried steak instead, so they're not associated with Germans. A more uncommon thing that was invented in Germany is actually the ring binder. So the ring binder was created by Friedrich Sonnecken in eight in 1886 and in the same year Louis Leitz introduced adding a hole to the cover. The big difference between ring binders from Americans and Germans is that, that the ones in Germany only have two holes and the ones in the US have three holes. The next thing is the nutcracker. A carving of the nutcracker actually started as a small cottage industry in the wooded regions of rural Germany. They're very known for the intercreated and creative decorations. The original nutcracker story is also actually based in Germany for the 19th century, which was a story by Berlin E.T.A. Hofmann. And then the story was later adapted into the famous ballet. Okay, so the next one is the Ginger Red House, which we also have a lot in the US. This one was actually based on the Brothers Grimm's uh, story about Hansel and Grether, the, the mean witch and, and her giant gingerbread house. Shortly before Christmas, they had a little opera do this show for Hansel and Greta, which by the way in German is Hansel and Grete. It became a tradition that uh, every time before, shortly before Christmas that the opera house would build a gingerbread house every year and soon the bakery started doing that and then people from outside like just normal families decided to make that one of their traditions too. Believe it or not, there's another German tradition that has to do with Christmas again. So I've already mentioned this one in one of my other videos. It is the advent calendar. This tradition started around 19, the 19th century with the German Lutherans. I don't know how you pronounce that. Anyway, so the idea behind that was that they note down how many days it is till Christmas so they could follow it on the calendar thing. The very early 20th century, Gerhard Lang decided to print an advanced calendar. So he was the first one who actually printed an advanced calendar for everyone. And a few years later, he decided to add some doors to it. So whenever you open the door, there's a the number hidden behind it. And after World War II, they decided to add like pictures or candy or candles behind the little doors. Believe it or not, the tradition of decorating the Christmas tree also originated from Germany. Before that, it was popular to have a Christmas tree, but the Germans were actually the ones that decided to decorate them. So they decorated it with candles, fruits, and other little things. Since it was a Christian thing, it spread over the world and like royal palaces wanted to do the same thing and show off all their riches on their trees. Okay, so according to the source of the internet, which we can always trust, of course, <clears throat> you know, I do my research. <laughs> so uh, according to that, the Easter egg hunt was actually founded by the Germans. Be a little more specific from the Southern Germans. North Germans suck apparently because there was a tradition of like that the Easter bunny left the eggs in the grass back then. But the Germans were like, you know what? Let's step it up a little bit. Let's have the children actually hunt for the eggs. So they would, uh, <clears throat> the Easter bunny would hide all the eggs somewhere, you know, all the German Easter bunny decided, you know what? This is too easy, we're just gonna hide the eggs for the children and they have to find it. And that's how the tradition of the Easter egg hunt started, apparently, to the internet. They've never proven it, but according to them, it's from Germany, so we'll take credit for that. So, um, I always thought people knew that gummy bears are from the Germany, but I guess some don't. So, gummy bears are from Germany. And to be specific, the Haribo brand was created in 1960 by Hans Riegel. Senior, I guess the SR stands for. A surprise fact that I did not know is that actually trolley, the trolley brand is also under the Haribo brand, which I did not know. And I'm gonna give you the original German slogan. So the American, the original German slogan goes the following. It goes, Haribo macht Kinder froh und Erwachsene ebenso, which pretty much just means Haribo makes kids happy and grown-ups too. Yay, great slogan. Yeah, they play that in the commercials a lot. Okay, so we've already discussed that the Brother Grimm's had a big influence on a lot of American stuff. Can you guess what else influence they had on? Dun, dun, dun. 
Disney! So all of the good old Disney movies are actually based on Brother Grimm's tales. So all the fairy tales that they tell in Germany. It's kind of like Hollywood taking stuff from Japan, you know, the Jap Japanese movies and just turning it into an American movie, so. So believe it or not, most picnic items are actually based from Germany. So no, of course, the picnic itself is not a German thing, I guess. But obviously the Wiener Wurst, Wiener Wurstchen, aka hot dog or sausage, obviously was originated from Germany. And a very interesting thing is, did you know that the condiments like ketchup was actually developed by Heinz and mayonnaise is developed by Hellmann, which are both German immigrants. But we do have to give credit to the ancient Rome for the ketchup because it did have a recipe before that, but it didn't taste that good. So the Germans changed that up a little bit and France gets the Credit for the mayonnaise because they did have invented, but you know, we kind of upgraded that. So, boop, boop. Well, then we have the potato salad because kartoffel salad just screams German, okay? Yes, yes, I know there's a lot of different dishes of like the potato salad, but the most common and most liked one is the German one. I apologize for everyone who thought they had a better salad, but no. Okay, and then we have the last one, which is the hair perm, which was very popular back in the 90s something. I can't remember what it was. <clears throat> Don't come after me, I was born in 2000 something. So, um, the hair perm was actually invented by the hairdresser, a German hairdresser, Charles Nessler. Um, and his first version of that was cow urine with water mm -hmm. to achieve those bouncy ways. Mwah. Until he decided to do like chemicals and other stuff on his poor wife. And um, yeah, apparently it resulted twice that her hair got burned off and she got burns on her scalp. So yeah, he, he should have tried it out on himself. Now that you know that, you can go out there and be like, hey, that's German, hey, that's German. And there's probably a lot of other origins. But that's a great thing about the US because we, um, the US is built on immigration. So we have a lot of influence from all over the world. So that was this week's video. Um, I'll see you next video. Cheers.